How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Bobby Six Killing. Welcome back to Exit Corners. It's time for us to kick off Chapter Four. That sinking feeling. That uh, <laughs> doesn't sound good, but uh, let's jump in anyway. Makes me think of the start of Nine Nine Nine. You know, when you're in the ship and the water fills up the room, and you know the one. Right at the start, the tutorial. The Four Elements Hotel no longer exists. That's right. Ink read the message again. It made no more sense the second time, or the third, or fourth. The Four Elements Hotel no longer exists. Ink paused, unsure of whether to bring it up. I don't want to cause panic, but if I don't tell them, their contacts might waste valuable, waste valuable time looking for this place. Here goes nothing. I got some bad news, guys. Did your friend get back to you? He did. As for the address of the hotel, is the Four Elements not in Bellbridge? That's fine, I suspected as much. Uh, not quite. The hotel isn't, like, anywhere. Could he not find the address? He did find an address, and it does lead to downtown Bellbridge. But the hotel doesn't exist anymore. Um, what? What do you mean it doesn't exist? Your friend must be mistaken. Well, there was a hotel called the Four Elements in Bellbridge, but the hotel was demolished around 20 years ago. It isn't around anymore. There's no point in telling your father to look for it. That's ridiculous. I don't believe that for a second. If the hotel doesn't exist, then how is it possible that we're inside of it? Well, uh... You know, I kind of expected something like this. I don't know why you're making a big deal out of it. You expected the hotel to not exist? Stop saying the hotel doesn't exist. What kind of talk is that? <laughs> Come on, Egg. There's perfectly an explanation for all this. You know what it is, right? We're not in the hotel? <laughs> It's just a fake. We're in another building. That's more likely than we travel through time. Let's go with, uh, you know, Occam's Razor or whatever. We're in another building. One designed to resemble the four elements. Right on. But, why would anyone want to disguise another building as a 20-year-old hotel? I'm not sure why Sint chose the four elements hotel specifically. Sint could simply hold some personal attachment to the hotel. Or maybe you knew one of the contacts would look up the address and wanted to get some sort of reaction out of us. That's possible too. What's important is that Seth has sent has made it impossible for us to call for help. We'd almost be better off if he hadn't given this building a name at all. There's no way for us to know where we are. So my father... Your father won't be able to find us. Even if he goes to where the Four Elements Hotel used to stand, he'll be looking in the wrong place. I still won't believe that until my father tells me himself. Fair enough. Ink held on to that hope that somehow Liza's father would report back with different news. He trusted Sean, but hoped his friend had simply gotten mixed up. Well, now that our chances of rescue have plummeted, looks like our best bet is to play Exit Corners and win. Yeah, we've been idling in this hallway long enough. Let's move. Ray led the way to the next room, with Ink following close behind. Two pairs of elevators lined the walls within. Ink found the air in the room pleasantly warm, if humid. Elevators. And no lobby in sight. We must be on ground level. Think they'll let us to the exit? It would be foolish to assume that we've already reached the exit. But we'll be one step closer at least. There's a door around the corner at the far end. There's a little plaque next to the door with a symbol on it. Not sure what it means. I think that just means it leads to a stairwell, dear. Right. Could you see if it's locked? Yeah, I guess. Hmm. Where's Scent, I wonder? I, um... I think we should take the stairs. Oh? Why's that? Unless you've got a good reason, Ether. I'd prefer to take the elevators. Never mind, then. We don't have a choice. The door leading to the stairwell is locked, so elevators it is. Elevators, you say? Doesn't look like there are any buttons we can use to call them. How are we supposed to get the doors open? I wonder if there's some sort of trigger or... A familiar noise disrupted Ink's thoughts. A puzzle, perhaps? Readings and salutations, contestants. I pray you're all having fun. With no monitor inside, it was difficult for Ink to pinpoint where Sin's voice was coming from. He lowered his head and listened. As for your next course of action, you'll notice there are four elevators in this room. In a few seconds, the elevators will open. I would suggest you have a look at them. Or you could die. Well, that was underwhelming. At least he has the decency not to waste our time. Just as Scent had promised, the elevators had all opened. He supported 
Each spot had a lit monitor. Oh, great. This seems pretty similar to the console in the first hallway. So it's a hand scanner? Looks like it. The other contestants called out from all the corners of the room. There's one over here too. And in this one. It would appear there's one in each of the elevators. Let's see here. Ray placed his hand on the scanner. Nothing. Huh. It's not working. I think he wants us to ride in different elevators. Oh, what makes you say that? Just a hunch. It's worth a try at least. Hey, listen up. Everyone get in a different elevator. When I count to three, put your hands on the scanner. And could hear the other contestants following Ray's instructions. Each of them made their way to a different elevator. Uh, hold on a second. There are five of us, but only four elevators. Oh, right. Looks like you have to double up with someone. Who should I go with? Up to you, I guess. Just hurry up and choose. Ink looked at the four open elevators. Ray stood in the first. Liza stood in the second. Beth stood in the third. I thought it'd be Ether. Finally, Ether stood in the fourth, shaking like a leaf. Why is she so jittery? She's really afraid of elevators. It's not that weird, right? Ah, I should just hurry up and pick one. It's not like it'll matter. Alright then. Oh shit, we get a lot of options. Um... I think we should go with Ether. Makes the most sense, right? I'll go with Ether. Ether might have tried to force a smile, but if she did, it was the most pathetic smile Ink had ever seen. Okay, something is definitely wrong here. Ink tiptoed into the elevator, making sure to give the girls some space. Alright everyone, on the count of three. One, two, three. The elevator doors behind them closed, robbing the elevator of any outside light. Hey Ink, thanks for coming with me. Oh, don't mention it. You looked a bit lonely to be honest. I hate closed spaces, my hands get all clammy and I get short of breath and, and, um, she's claustrophobic? Anyway, I hope someone would keep me company. I hope you don't find that selfish of me. Oh, come on, that's hardly selfish. Besides, everyone's afraid of something. But this is pathetic. I'm pathetic. Ether, that's, oh shit, I missed one, sorry. This is just one big coffin, escape is impossible, it's never wrong. I know now, I know, the same way. Same way I know about Ether. Are you talking to me or? So strong today. Ether, you need to calm down. What are you trying to tell me? Hmm? Slowly now. I'm sorry. I don't even really know what I'm saying. My head is all messed up. This looks like more than simple claustrophobia. Is there anything I can do to help? The girl shook her head. It looks like all they could do is wait for the elevator ride to end. Poor thing, she's trembling. Ether looked up at him. She opened her mouth to speak, but another voice filled the elevator instead. Hello, contestants. The synthetic voice made both of them jump. Ink guided and nearly paralyzed Ether to the corner of the elevator to get a better view of the monitor. Sure enough, in the middle of the screen. I hope you're enjoying the ride thus far. Wait, have we started moving already? Hmm? Maybe we are. We've been going so slowly that it's hard to tell. However, I'm afraid this ride is about to take a turn for the worse. I should strongly advise evacuating this elevator as soon as possible. What's that? It's too late to evacuate? How unfortunate. I'll admit, my timing on that one could have been better. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. A recent study confirms that most people would prefer drowning to being crushed or burned alive. This is of course completely unrelated to exit corners. I can't imagine anyone wanting to drown, however if the alternatives are really that awful. <laughs> Goodbye. Ah, crap. Ah, uh, Ink! Below us! Ink didn't even have to look. He could already feel it at his feet. Water. Fuck! We're sinking! Ink slammed his fists on the elevator's closed doors, but it was useless. There wasn't anyone in the elevator hall to help them. He tried to wedge his finger between the two steel doors, hoping to pry them open, but only succeeded in bruising his knuckles. When that didn't work, he wailed on the same door some more. Let me out of here! Are we gonna... Uh, Ink? Ether looked worse than ever before, her shaking worsened, and every word she spoke fought to escape her throat. Ink put his hand on her shoulder. He didn't expect the gesture to calm her down, but he didn't know what else to do. It was at that moment that Ink noticed something had appeared on the monitor at the back of the elevator. A puzzle. Ink felt a small fire welling up inside of him. This is no time for hesitation. What's going to happen to us? I know you're scared, Ether, but try to stay calm. 
I'm gonna get you out of here, okay? Okay. The puzzle. It's obviously here for a reason. I think if we solve it, we'll be alright. It's not like we have a choice. We need to solve this thing. And fast. Are we on a timer? Please don't be on a timer. Don't drown. Well, that's easy. Let's make the arrow point up instead of down. Can we do that? We'll have to be negative space again. Because of the shapes we have. Right? Oh, that's not right. That's not right either. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm not very good at this, but I'll figure it out. I wish I could remember what the actual original arrow looked like. Oh, here we go, here we go. It's like, uh, like this. I remember now. There you go, bam! Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. That's good, the last one was quite hard. That had, to, that had better be the right answer. That looks about right, but... Ether fell silent. She waded through waist-high water and gripped Ink's hand so hard she almost crushed it. Ink closed his eyes. All he could do now was wait. Waiting. Waiting. Ink's eyes shot open as he heard the doors behind him do the same. Whatever water remained on the elevator spilled into the room. Ink let it carry him out into the cold, hard floor. <laughs> Ink? Would you mind... Hey, I'm allowed to laugh. I almost had a heart attack back there. All of the elevators returned at once, it seems. Why don't you help me check up on the other scene? If you're in such high spirits. Sure, I can do that. Ray and Ether were standing by the wall closest to Ink. Ray seemed a little shaken, but otherwise fine. I'm a little worried about Ether. I mean... Look at her, she's practically shivering. I think she just needs some time to regain her composure. I'll have a word with her, just to be safe. That leaves one contestant. Is she just deep in thought, or is something wrong? Hey, uh... Are you alright? Did it happen to you too? Just look around, Liza. Everyone's soaked from the thighs down. What do you think? Oh, is that... Right, you're right. Of course. Did you solve the puzzle? Did it even show up for you? I saw it, but I didn't solve it. Did you? Yeah, we managed to solve it. I guess Santa arranged it so that if one of us solved the puzzle, it would raise all four elevators. Thank God he had the decency to set it up that way. Gee, what a stand-up guy. Remind me to attend his next charity dinner. I guess hoping for a thank you is a bit optimistic of me. Anyway, Ink, it seems your friend was right after all. Oh? The four elements was, in fact, demolished before I was even born. My father sent me a message while I was in the elevator. He said the same thing your friend did. So what's your dad going to do now? He says he's going to have his men check out downtown Bellbridge, where the hotel used to stand. I'm not sure how much good that'll do. My father will find me. That's a guarantee. Alright, if you say so. A strange clicking sound made Ink turn his head. What was that? Looks like the something the puzzle unlocked the door to the stairwell. I think that's the only way forward. Yeah, looks like it. Ink scratched his head. Something was off. Is anyone getting the impression that this game seems a bit too... linear? Not quite sure what you mean by that. Go through a door, solve a puzzle, unlock the next door, repeat. When Sense said that we need to discover the exit, I thought there'd be some kind of large maze-like compound to explore. There are traps and stuff for sure, but the game's actually structure is a lot simpler than I expected. It's linear because it has to be. Huh? What do you mean by that? Everything in this hotel is automated. The mechanisms that unlock the doors, the puzzles, sense messages, and even the traps. They all seem to run themselves using sensors and switches. No external input required. From a design standpoint, having the game be linear makes it a hell of a lot easier to plan out. Even in the rooms where you don't need to press any switches, the messages could be set to play after a short delay. The one back in the lounge worked like that, I think. But if Scent doesn't need to operate the game in any way, then what's he doing right now? You think he's watching us somehow? Worse. Scent is one of us. What? How could you say that? I've been considering that possibility for some time now. Ray's analysis of the traps really put it into perspective, though. One of us is Scent. Hey, now, let's not jump to conclusions here. Ink, listen. Exit Corners is a game. Or so we've been told. Games are for people's amusement. Whose amusement? Not mine, that's for sure. This game was made to please Scent. He must get a kick out of watching people squirm. Now, what do you suppose would be the easiest way to observe and keep track of us? 
by pretending to be a contestant. Is that what you're getting at? Precisely. He's got a front row seat to his own twisted game. Why would Sen put themselves at such a risk? Not only the traps, but if any of us found out who they really were, well, he probably knows the locations of the traps and the solutions to the puzzles. And I suppose his plan is to avoid getting caught. But... Ink racked his brain trying to find something that would prove Liza wrong. His search was fruitless. As much as he didn't want to believe it, Liza's theory was plausible. Don't tell me that never crossed your mind, Ink. Well, I... Ink stammered, unable to come up with a suitable reply. Just who are you, Sent? What are you after? Are you really... one of us? End chapter. Well, that's quite short, but uh, we are going to wrap it up here. If if a chapter ends up being under 15 minutes, I think I'll do a second chapter in that same one. This is only just over 15 minutes, but we'll leave it here. Um, I just don't want it to be too, too short, but I also don't want to get too long. You know how it is. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.